fucking stop being shit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, in the microphone, Jack. So you'll have the jack like that, like literally where your little prong thing goes in. You know, like that. There's obviously a, a dodgy connection, and if I grab the top of the microphone lead like that, and I pull it, and then cable tie it, so basically we're pulling that way and side loading that way, it makes contact. The problem is, he's right behind there, is the fucking memory card slot for the SD card. And it, if you push this just ever so slightly too much, it fucks the connection to the well. So I've got to dick around just going eh, eh, until they get sound and then and then tighten the cable tie, but not too much because it it, fuck, it says no card and fucks me over. Anyway, <laughs> my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today um, I want to start something a slight bit different. Um, which is uh, the updates. So the updates are kind of just quickly and start blurring out everything. But I thought we'd do a, a hangout with Matt. Simple, simple minds. But <laughs> we'll do a, a hangout with Matt where I can basically go through some of the videos I'm going to do, um, some of the things that I want to. It is an update, but it's a bit more, you know, dicking about. Um, any road so what I can do is I can kind of I thought it's best to try and incorporate you guys into this even more um, so there are times when I do a video and then people come out with all these ideas and I'm like fucking hell do you know what I should have done it that way that is that you bang on right there that would have been a, a better explanation that would have been a better anything that would have been it, you know just better you know, there are people out there a lot sharper and a lot smarter than me. Any road. So, to that end. Uh, oh, I've, got a little, I've got bits of paper everywhere, lists. I, I, I've got my book, but it's not here. I've got a book, but it's not here. Uh, anything on this one? I think this was last week's. Shift cam, patent. Uh, I think I did that. Fast idle. Breakings for new rings, want to talk about uh, extra plug for split cycle. Retightening head bolts and wire, that's a good one. Crash gearboxes. Right. I think I've done the crash gearbox one. Any road. <laughs> so, what I've got to do is um, I've got one of these, a uh, funnel, this is a fucking draper shit one. But it was perfect for what I need. So it's got a big thingy, and it's got a fucking orifice, and then it's got a smaller orifice. A fucking, yeah, so you can detach these. It came with one that goes on a pipe, with a, a pipe valve on it, and it came with one that's just got a fucking, I don't know, penis gauge or something. Check out your girth. I'm going to be using that soon um, as a demonstration of sorts. Um, Oh yeah, so the other thing is, is that uh, we're going to go ahead with the R1 um, clutch Produce a PDF document with all the photos we've taken and so on And point to all these things And basically do what I do for a job So basically give you an insight onto how you would um, How to separate your preconceptions of what has happened So when you look at that you go, oh I know what it is But in a sense proving that or demonstrating that that is what is um, the more probable um, avenue for a failure. FA. That's failure analysis for those people who don't know what the fuck FA stands for. Not Football Association. Fucking don't get me started on football. So. I do need some help. Um, this is going to be, I'm well chuffed, I'm, you know, I was waiting for you guys to see what you'd say to see if I could put, if I should put the effort in, basically. Not just to go, no, 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 just do one video, just point at cracks and go, look. Um, so what I've done is, I've gone away and done um, some CAD work and some simulations. Um, but not only that, is we're going to, you know, that's... That's one of the videos that is going to talk about simulations, how close they are, how much we can trust them, stuff like that, uh, and how they work. But, that was from a 2008 uh, 
Yamaha R1. It is an aftermarket clutch. Um, so this is well juicy because um, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> and the failure... Um, well, I'm not going to mention the failure. It is quite juicy, though. I mean, really juicy. And um, there's a lot we can do with that that I think people are going to find very, very interesting. To that end, I asked the guy who sent, uh, sent me it, I said, uh, I want to go balls deep in this. Is it all right if I keep it for quite a while? He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. He says, you know, it's just going to go on a shelf kind of thing. He says, you know, keep it as long as you need to do the thing. And then away you go. And then just send it back. I was like, yeah, yeah, fine. Um, I did ask him if he had the OEM one. So uh, what I'm after, and it is very important, not very important. I really do want this. And anyone who sends me anything like this will have it returned if they want to and all the rest of it. But... Uh, they went 2007 to 08, right? That's the clutch we. That's the uh, the base we have. Now it's a bit weird because usually uh, that section of a clutch is a clutch boss, uh, and then you have a clutch basket. With this one, it's a bit weird. Um, it kind of it kind of splits. It's it's two separate entities. You can kind of get that with slipper clutches, but this is a bit weird because it has the clutch boss. So, regardless, what it is, I'll put a picture up. It's basically just the bottom plate with the uh, the, the rear pressure plate, if you want to call it that, with the um, turrets. There's six in it, but whatever. Um, with the turrets in it for the springs and you know to tighten your pressure plate down. And all this. this is the part I'm after. Um, I would like a pre. Uh, 07, so I think it was oh, 2005, I, I, I'm not hot on the numbers, 2000, was it 2005 to 2006 or was it 2004, or maybe even earlier, it might have been 2001, whatever, the, the, the generation before, that's the one I want, if you have the generation before, that would be fantastic, I know it doesn't have a slipper clutch, and I know that the 2008 one doesn't have a slipper clutch, um, but if you have the OEM, um, Pre-07 one, that would be fantastic. Just this base bit. Now, it will come with the boss if it's the normal one. If you have... Um, oh, for fuck's sake. If you have the OEM 2007-2008 and the 09, so the one after that, I want the OEM one for that as well. Now, like I say, uh, if it's broken, as long as it's not shattered into pieces or whatever, if it's got wear on it and stuff, that's not a problem. We can differentiate um, the reason why I want them is because I want to CAD them up um, because this is an excellent example of aftermarket stuff versus the OEM stuff because afterwards they then incorporated a slipper clutch so we can actually have a look at the OEM's version uh, Yamaha's version of a slipper clutch versus this aftermarket one and I've looked at the pictures I know what the pictures look like I can see the differences and it's quite very very interesting um, but I need the physical thing to basically do the simulations to copy because we're not just going to do the simulations. The simulations are just one section. We're actually going to try and do some testing. So we're going to come out with a hypothesis and actually test it, which is awesome. Um, I'm running around like a knobber trying to get the Christmas special. It'll only be one video. It'll actually be very short and sweet. I'm trying to get that sorted. Um, the RG500 we are going to be doing over Christmas, so this is the beginning of my holiday. So the first thing we need to do is clean up the cases, but the, the, on par with that at the same time, we're just going to split these cranks and get them back together. So that'll be cool. Uh, people, I'm just going to try and answer some questions that have come around. Still have the SV. People keep on asking, you know, did you get rid of it? What's happened to it? It's still here. We've got a lot to do with that. Kind of waiting for next year for that, which I don't have to wait long. Um, there's been quite a few questions about uh, particular subjects that we can actually uh, look at. So someone was asking about feeler gauges. Someone was showing me some pictures and stuff of um, Conrod side thrusting. Basically how much um, clearance you have uh, along the crank axis uh, with Conrod and crankshaft interference. Uh, interference. Um, engagement, stuff like that. Uh, 
beryllium copper, uh, from the materials experiments, we've got some beryllium copper and we can do the thermal conductivity and I can show you some of that. And there was a bit in the video where I said it was about 66 watts uh, of a Kelvin, a meter Kelvin. And someone says, oh, that's really low. And that was the point because there are, <laughs> and I've been witness to this, there are actually a few uh, alloys um, of beryllium copper and they range from being pretty crap thermal conductivity to pretty good. And it's all the other things you dope in there like nickel and all the rest of it. Uh, manganese and stuff like that and it, it them slight um, uh, percentage changes in the alloy can really change the uh, thermal conductivity and it ranges from about 66 to about 140 I think that's the highest I've ever seen um, which is pretty damn good uh, so we'll, 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 that was on the end of that so we're going to do the next part of that um, we have some, I have some titanium valves, so we can also um, compare some titanium valves against just some regular stellite ones. We've got some stellite ones. We've just got some. <coughs> one of the other th uh, stellite valves. What was I going to say? I was going to say something else, but I forgot. Oh, well, that's what this hangout thing's about. Um, <laughs> this is basically an unpolished video where I just start chatting about whatever I can fucking see and whatever we're going to do. Uh, I'm actually, actually in the background, I'm actually, actually, um, people are saying get some ACF jobby in the big bottle, I've got that, um, I've also got one of these, which is a worth, uh, this comes with a brake cleaner, it's actually really good, it makes your brake, it basically you can get this thing, and six bottles of the stuff. They might seem expensive. I can't really watch it. It was like 30 quid. But when you actually work it out and how this, um, how it's better than the cans, a lot, lot better. So you can kind of save quite a bit of money. You just, you know, you spend 30 quid or whatever it is. You buy it bulk and then um, you're pretty much done with brake cleaner for fucking ages. Uh, and that was a recommendation from the guy off the, off the on the channel. But I've also got this, you know, this chem with that fucking bottle. This is Fucking garbage, absolutely garbage. But I am going to show you the XCP nozzle. This is my collection of stuff to do. It's in there somewhere. But it's a long, windy, windy nozzle that goes on the end of the XCP. I want to see if that works with the ACF50. Um, what was I going to say? I'm going to show you some because uh, Tim was asking a while back. He was asking, you know when do I bother, where do I put it, and how do I apply it. Now, you know, the whole spray gun and compressor, and I've got a shitty little wolf compressor sat in here, not that I can use it, but buying a compressor and a spray gun, um, and uh, not a, a, a siphon one, a gravity-fed one. <laughs> it gets fuck off. This stuff is like treacle, so what I did was, is I put some ACF in here, and it fucking, it, even though you can pump up the pressure on this thing, nah, nah, it's it's just, the pressure isn't great enough, it, basically it's the nozzle, the nozzle is not good enough. When you spray this, well I'll show you in the video, but when you spray this as, you know, something as thin as brake cleaner, it kind of fans out in a mist, which is kind of what you'd want. So what I'm doing in the background is looking for, um, just a bottle, a bottle you can buy. So here's a WD-40, you'll see this soon. This has got nothing to do with WD-40, this is actually another video, um, which is quite cool as well, because uh, it's a question, it's not a question that a lot of people have, it's something that no one thinks about. So that's what that's for. James sent me this from America, thank you so much James, he sent me two. One's here to try this ACF-50 thing, I don't think, it, no I did try it, it didn't work. Um, I'm just trying to find some kind of uh, you know, refillable applicator like this, because this just squirts it out in a stream, it's it's too much, you want a mist. So I'm going to try and find out if there's a, a bottle that will spray stuff in a mist, um, and it's all to do with the nozzle, you know what I mean? So, where well, you don't need aerosols and propellants and stuff like that, so you can just have a bottle, take the lid off, pump it up, or do whatever. And yes, I've been twiddling the nozzles on the end to try and adjust it, it's having none of it. It basically just comes, it's just too thick. But there's some chemical engineering going on in there. There is the question of about thinning it down, but 
The problem with thinning it down is that I don't know how that's going to affect um, the resealability of it, how well it clings and stuff like that. So I'm going to set up some samples where we're going to have ACF 50 and a few others where I washed it down with brake cleaner, acetone, IPA, xylene um, and just see how we go. Xylene might be a good one. But then it might also not be because it doesn't flash off quick enough. I'm not a chemist and stuff like that. I don't know also if it'll react with the ACF50 and actually stop the ACF50 working, as in generally just gelling together. Because the way the ACF50 works is it just creates this barrier. Um, why am I doing ACF50, not XCP, even though from my, my own experiments, uh, ACF50, I like it because it's not as sticky. It's literally because that XCP stuff is sticky as fuck. And I did spray some on the SV uh, just to give it a go. Didn't record it like a dickhead. We might actually do it again with the... I might spray a section of the uh, Z900 as I'm riding around in winter. And see if we actually... And do one side of the bike, the exact same bit. So one side of the bike in XCP and one side of the bike in ACF50. And see after, you know, after a week... Um, is one gooier than the other? You know what I mean? Is one has one got loads of shit stuck to it and one hasn't? Because it, the stickiness might not matter. I don't know. So let's you know we'll test that shit out. Uh, we've got some more failure analysis stuff to finish off. Uh, we've got a two-stroke cylinder we can have a look at. Um, we've got a brake caliper which is really quite funky that Rich sent me, which is really cool. I'm trying to plan and organise some visits um, so I go and see stuff and I kind of want to keep that under my hat for the time being um, and I don't know where my hat's gone so <laughs> I don't fucking know so you lot don't know but um, we're going to cut apart the uh, Z900 exhaust and see what's in there there's the other one which is the Ultra Oh, I forgot to call it now. Uh, ultra low emission zone. Ultra low emission zone. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about that. I, do you know what? I was not aware about uh, this until Tim and Andy, they both live in London, so Tim and Andy told me about this. And I was absolutely, I was like, what? I was like, nah, don't be daft. And then looking into it, I was like, fucking knobheads. But... Um, I've got the basics. Um, I've got the basic information of what it means, and so on. And then the guy literally contacted me yesterday, and he was saying, "I've got my V5 here. I've got this bike. It's pre 2007." And then he's actually received a letter from um, London Council or whatever it's called, the mayor's office or what have you. Um, uh, Transport for London. He's actually received a letter. It's actually to him. It's obviously what they just send out for everything. But it's very interesting because this actually tells you, and I'm going to basically do a video where I break down what this basically means very, very quickly because it's boring. Very quickly what this means. They say, they say 2007 and Euro 3, but it's a bit more complicated than that. And it doesn't mean <coughs> that if your bike isn't is pre-2007 that you have to pay. I'm gonna tell you um, what they've told him and you know uh, me or what I've understood and basically got from it. Um, so I can basically tell you what you have to do because they literally say in this letter, um, if your bike is pre-2007, which is the Euro 3 standard when that came into effect, um, this is what you have to do in a sense to prove that your bike is still below this emissions line. It's quite interesting stuff, really. So, you know, I think it'd be quite helpful for a lot of people, um, you know, and so on. And all the videos I've seen on YouTube and stuff, and even the articles on this, bike-related articles, they don't, they don't make it, they don't, they're not, it's, like, it's almost like they're not helping you. They just say, 2007, or you're fucked, basically. You know, and it's not, that is not the case. Um, it doesn't mean that you're all fine, but we'll we'll get to that. And there's steps that you personally have to go through if A and B and C don't align properly. But anyway, we'll go through that as well because I thought that's that's quite useful to people. And <laughs> says you're right for living in London. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. We've got one or two little tool reviews. I say reviews. We're going to destroy some shit. And um, there's going to be one or two ride-alongs. I thought, fuck it, let's do some in the winter. Um, some guy asked me a very good question, actually. He was like, uh, when you did your um, Z900 braking video when you are out on the road, that car pulled out in front of you at the end, that clip you added. Bloody hell! <laughs> I was putting my visor up, it fucking nearly knocked me off my bike there, so. This fucker's one of the worst ones. That was. See, look! I know you got to get out, love, but fuck me! Excellent example! Hey, see, I could have been hooning along at fucking 80, 90 mile an hour, no time. No, it shouldn't have seen me. Sun's right behind me. Little dinky headlight on these things. I'm a thin pro. Well, I'm a fat bastard, but a thin profile. You know what I mean? Just no chance. That would have been the fucking story of me. And he said, you know, that was very interesting. And do you have any pointers and stuff? for young riders and stuff, what they have to watch out for when they go from a smaller bike to a bigger bike, or just in general, full stop. And I thought, yeah, that's a very good point, because I, ha I, I, I have some clips, um, just like that end clip, I wasn't I, I wasn't even really going to put that in, it was just, I just thought, fuck it. Um, but yes, we're going to do some videos, I'm going to show you some uh, locations where there's things that you've just basically got to watch out for. And just pay attention to the topography and everything around you. Because there are certain areas where it causes wankers, car drivers, to be wankers. To go to the full extent, you know what I mean? The drive around going 20% wanker today. But there's certain areas, junctions and stuff like that. Where drivers are like, yeah, let's go full on 100% wanker. And then that's usually where a lot, of, a lot of accidents happen with bikes, you know what I mean? Um, and the interesting thing is sometimes it's a bit your fault as well. But any anyway, road, <coughs> or it can be, let me put it that way. Hope that makes sense for the time being, and I'll see you in a bit.